Sioux Falls City Council to order informational meeting four o'clock August 28th 2012 I welcome everyone to not the Carnegie this is the uh, Minnehaha County Commission Chambers we're just so grateful to Minnehaha County to um, for helping us out to uh, provide us some space as our building continues to be under a remodeling project that has kind of pushed our council and clerk staffs out of the building for a few days if you're looking for those staff members um, they are located right now in the main library downtown on North Dakota Avenue and their phone numbers are all the same and so I invite you to give them a call and they're <laughs> glad to help you in any way that they can or that they normally would but I just invite you to uh, to uh, stop by the library or give them a call. So again, thanks Minnehaha County for allowing us to do this. We're going to move right move forward through the agenda this afternoon, starting with a report from Land Use Committee. Councilor Rolfing is out, and so Councilor Karski will provide the report. Thank you. I had a brief minute to review what we went over, but I do recall most of it. Um, last week when we met, we had a couple of committees that were did some presentations one was on zoning ordinance amendments and there were talking about a timeline over the next four or five months coming up in December where just kind of a comprehensive redraft of all of our zoning um, amendments and how we how we zone and plan developments and that type of thing kind of making it a more comprehensive um, revision of our ordinance then we also talked about the uh, vicious dog ordinance revision and updating. We have some loopholes in our laws currently and our ordinances currently. We were presented with two options, which one we wanted to bring to the full council. We were asked to study them both and make our recommendation at next month's meeting. Uh, then Darren Smith <laughs> talked about uh, our TIF policy with our, for our council, just kind of over give us an overview of what TIFs are, the recent changes to state statutes, how they can be used, and that type of thing, informational mostly. And then also Darren Smith followed up with um, kind of a, what's going to be going on, a new plan for 2025. The initial one went through 2015. Um, we're coming up on that rapidly, so just kind of an up down, a downtown plan for 2025 and some potential development going on around the golf course and that type of thing. Um, pretty much it in a nutshell. Great, thank you, Councilor Karski. Questions for Councilor Karski? I know many of us were there or watched it later. Questions on that meeting? All right, moving forward, we'll go into open discussion. I'm gonna start, though, with Rich Oaksel, our lead internal auditor. He has an introduction for us this afternoon. Good afternoon, Council. We are pleased to say that we are up to full strength now. Um, I'll have our newest auditor introduce herself, but she started a week ago Monday on the 20th. So I'll just have her come up and... Great. Thank you. Please do. Okay. Well, nice to meet everyone. I'm Kim Schroeder. Joined the audit team, like you said, last Monday. Have a few years of experience in public auditing with I. Bailey. So happy to join the team and how about Good. you? Welcome. Thank you, Kim. We're glad to have you here. Thanks. Then open discussion, Council. I know that uh, Councilor Aguilar has an announcement to make. Yes, I'm a grandmother for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> James was born on Saturday evening and went home today. He was 20 inches long and weighed 7 pounds, 15 ounces. Good name, James. It's a great name. <laughs> yes, it is. Actually, he's named after my father. <laughs> Not after Councilor Andrews. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations to Thank the you. entire family. Other open discussion this afternoon. All right, we're moving through this fast. Let's move on to presentations. Land Management Integration Project, Kevin Smith. Chad Heavey, <coughs> Deb Dykowski, everybody's coming up for, Deborah's going to start. Great, thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm here to update you on the land management and integration project. My name is Deborah Dykowski. I'm the project manager on the project. Uh, the land management integration project is the implementation of a new land management software system that the city purchased in March of this year from Energup Solutions at a cost of $1.3 million. Currently, the city does not have an enterprise-wide land management system, so this will be a new way of tracking all business activities that are tied to a parcel or an address. 
some of the <coughs> types of activities that we're talking about are like code enforcement, professional licenses, business licenses, uh, permitting, inspections, planning and program <coughs> activities that are related to property or land. The departments that are involved in this implementation include attorneys, community development, fire, health, uh, cities uh, planning and building services, and public, public works. Some of the key features of the software system include the citizen access, interactive voice response, and MyDevPay. Citizen access will allow citizens to go online from their home and access business information from um, their computer at home. And this would be things such as permits, they could look up an address, see what kind of permits have been pulled, what kind of inspection information, um, all that stuff right from their home. Uh, contractors and developers will be able to submit uh, like development plans online for review or apply for a permit online. The interactive voice response is a feature for contractors when they have to uh, call in for an inspection for their project. They can do that now or will be able to do that uh, without having to talk to a city staff person. They can just uh, make the request um, over the phone. And then the MyGovPay is a credit card feature online. Again, this will be uh, an opportunity for citizens to do business online and pay for permits and things such as that with a credit card. Again, contractors can do the same. So it's uh, um, features where it's, it's an added convenience for the community and it frees up to the staff time so they have time to do other things. This shot just kind of shows you a screenshot of say somebody were going to come in and pull a building <coughs> permit. This is what the staff would see on their computer screen. The upper half is just some <laughs> The upper half is just some general fields to enter information. The lower half is uh, other additional information like contacts. And then on the left hand side is like a workflow of activities, uh, adding attachments, other things like that. The timeline started uh, about mid-May. We started the project and we're moving forward. We're in the assess and define stage right now. Um, the project is expected to complete about a year from now. We've got a few more phases to go through after this stage. It would be the configure and build, uh, user acceptance testing, and then the training and readiness before we do the go live. Did I think I missed? now has been participating in an assessment process with the EnterGov team. This has involved conference calls and going through a very detailed uh, outline of business activities that they do. And this is needed so that the EnterGov team can look at the way we're doing business now and see how it um, interacts with their system and the way they have their system set up. And then moving forward, we'll continue this assessment process and we'll get the the outlines from EnterGov on exactly how we do business, and then they'll be able to tell us, this is how the EnterGov system does it. Uh, we make these recommendations to make possibly make some modifications to your business workflow so that you can gain some efficiencies, because since we didn't have the system before, um, it gives them an opportunity to integrate the two and, and come up with some best practices on how they do business. The other members of the project are the project sponsors, Chad, Chad Heavey and Kevin Smith, who are here today. And then other men, members of the project team incur, include two business leads, Barb Stoltenberg and Lori Soule, and a test lead, which is Betsy Auden, and then a technical lead, which is Wade Bentz. So this team has assisted me throughout this whole process and have been outstanding in their um, offering their expertise as we move forward through this. So we can take any questions. Questions for Deborah? Yes, Councilor Jameson. Do we just talk into these or just talk? Yeah, just talk. Uh, how much was this again? $1.3 million. And obviously the attempt is to provide better service and save money somewhere. How are we saving money? I can see the service part. How do we save money? Um, it'll create some efficiencies um, through having a single um, access point for address information. Right now, 
Um, as we do business, we have several different databases within the different departments, and this brings it all together. And you know, it could include uh, reducing staff if you know you really get good at, at your business flow. Um, those types of things. Other questions for Deborah? Could you put on the screen again the uh, the uh, departments that will be affected, <coughs> please? So the system will be interactive then for all of these different departments to be part of, so they'll have the same information base then. Right, exactly. And say the fire department, they have different functions that they perform, so it may only be a portion of their business activities that they're <coughs> using Energa for, but um, for the most part, every one of these departments can pull up an address and see the information, say, health pulls up an address, they can see that a fire permit was pulled at that address, um, that kind of thing. So it all interacts and everybody's looking at the same thing. Good questions for Deborah. Councilor Antimon, yeah. Uh Park permits and stuff like that will be able to be paid on this system? Um, not so much. When you say park permits, I guess I'm, I just want to clarify, it's not really the citizens when they're um, going online to register for things would be like a special events permit, right. that kind of thing, yes. Other questions? Timeline on this, Deborah? Hopefully completion about this time next year. Go so, live. Okay, so fully functional by in a year. We, do we own the product now and we're just getting it set up or? You know, we now? haven't paid completely for everything. We're paid a portion of the the software and the software has been installed on our system, but it's not functional quite yet. We need to go through this whole process of determining what our business activities are, how they flow, and how it interacts with the Energo system. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Last call. Good. Thank you so much, Deborah. Appreciate your report and your time. Moving on in our presentations, the Joint Powers Agreement with the Moody County Conservation District, Bob Kappel, Jack Mid. Good afternoon, Council Chair and Councilors. Uh, Bob Kappel with the Public Works Environmental Division. Uh, I'd like to introduce a few of our team members with me today. Uh, I have Jack Majors uh, with the, he is the Chairman of the Board of Supervisors of Moody County Conservation District. Uh, Andy Berg from the Public Works Envir uh, Engineering Division. Uh, we have Bar Barry Berg, who is a Project Coordinator with the Moody County Conservation District. And I think it's kind of interesting we have two Bergs on a team, so that must be a good sign, so. <laughs> Uh, our team shall be submitting a resolution to the council, uh, and this res resolution is to enter into a joint powers agreement with the Moody County Conservation District with the intent to improve the water quality of the Big Sioux River. Today we shall be providing a summary of some history, some needs, and our proposed project implementation plan that we want to proceed on. technology yet. First of all, a little background regulatory. As you know, it, the uh, EPA developed, developed the Clean Water Act, and this was adopted in 1972. So it's been 40 years since the uh, uh, U.S. federal government has basically tried to clean up the waters of the United States. The goal of the, uh, the Clean Water Act is to restore and maintain the physical, chemical, and biological integrity of the waters of the, uh, the U.S. As part of that, the state of South Dakota has assigned some beneficial uses to the water bodies in South Dakota. And following is a list of those designated uses for the Big Sioux River in our area. 
The two areas that we are focusing on today are the warm water semi-permanent fish life propagation and immersion recreation. Also to help reach the uh, Clean Water Act goal, the state has developed some criteria to protect these beneficial uses. These are called the South Dakota Surface Water Quality Standards. They have also issued permits to protect these beneficial uses through surface water discharge permits. And also the state has periodically evaluated the water quality and issues a biannual integrated report and it identifies waters that are considered impaired within the state of South Dakota. The state also is required to develop total maximum daily loads of any water body that is not, does not reach the water quality standards and is considered impaired. The Big Sioux River in our area is, has been designated as an impaired water body, specifically for uh, warm water semi-permit fish life propagation and immersion <coughs> recreation. And back in 2009, the state of South Dakota uh, pursued developing a total maximum daily load for these uh, stretches of the river in the Sioux Falls area. And at that time, the city of Sioux Falls volunteered and has been the project lead on that TMDL project. We expect completion of that project within a month. From the perspective of the EPA and the state of South Dakota, they look at pollutants from two different sources. And they are what are considered a point source or non-point source. A point source is from a discrete pipe, generally speaking is like the city's wastewater treatment plant discharges, industry discharges, and these are regulated discharges. The state issues permits to make sure they comply with the surface water quality standards. And then there's the other side is what is considered non-point sources. These are generally from agricultural community or other non-point sources that are not regulated. And that's an important thing to recognize as we move forward here. There has been some move by the EPA to regulate some large activities in the agricultural community. And one of those activities recently that has been regulated is what we call a large cannibal, uh, cat, uh, excuse me, concentrated animal feeding operation. So large cattle lots, large uh, hog lots, those types of things are now being regulated by the state of South Dakota and the US EPA. <coughs> In the first two decades since the Clean Water Act, a lot of money and a lot of time has been invested in trying to improve the discharges from the point sources. And there's been significant improvements in that. But obviously it didn't solve the problem. There's many, many water bodies within the, the US and the state that are still impaired. So in the last two decades, the US EPA in the state of South Dakota has been focusing their efforts on urban stormwater discharges and also these non-point sources within these impaired water bodies. The big thing that deals with non-point sources is that these are not regulated communities. And so really all the work that's done in non-point source side is voluntarily, and it's usually done with some kind of assistance from federal, state, or local funding. And one example of that uh, funding to assist the non-point source community is what we call the State uh, Revolving Fund Program. They have a unique program where, like the city of Sioux Falls, when we go out and borrow money for major infrastructure here in the city of Sioux Falls, we can get a lower interest rate on that SRF loan, and then that difference uh, between the lower interest rate is basically given back to the city to be used for state-approved non-point source pollutant uh, projects within our region. So it's a really unique situation where we get a, a reduced rate, we aren't paying higher interest rates, and that money is basically passed through directly from the city of Sioux Falls to these non-point source pollution projects. And it's important to recognize that these projects are approved through the state of South Dakota. I, what I show here here is uh, three major uh, SRF loans that the city of Sioux Falls has entered into within, since 2011. The first one is it's called the NPS non-point source uh, SRF loan 21. Uh, currently, there is there $370,000 approximately that is available for these non-point source projects. The second uh, loan there was loan number 32. Uh, that's where the city borrowed approximately $13.9 million for the central uh, sanitary sewer project. Those funds generated about $1.2 million available that we can now use for non-point source pollutant projects within our region. Just an example of what we've done with some of those funds. Uh, the city has basically managed some specific bank stabilization projects between Sioux Falls and Dell Rapids. And here are some examples that have taken place. Uh, our engineering division uh, has basically helped uh, supervise and manage 
the stabilization of 27,500 linear feet, or approximately 5.2 miles, uh, at a cost of about $2.1 million up and down the Big Sioux River. And the intent of these projects are to stabilize the banks to prevent sediment from being washed back into the Big Sioux River, increasing the sediment load on the Big Sioux River. Obviously, we're, uh, yeah, as we increase uh, the amount of money we borrow through these SRF loans, we generate more non-point source funds. And we wanted to basically reach out to the non-point source community and get their assistance. Uh, we believe and we recognize that the non-point source community has the expertise, they have the relationships, and, and they, they know the stakeholders in the agricultural community better than the city of Sioux Falls. And so we, what we did is we reached out to them about two years ago in the stakeholders in the non-point source community and asked them if they wanted to be involved with the expenditure of our non-point source funds. Uh, we developed an informal stakeholder group. Uh, this work group worked with the South Dakota Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Uh, we developed a watershed approach to assess and mitigate the water quality issues in the Big Sioux River. Uh, and at that time, one of the stakeholders st stood, uh, took the st a forward step and said they would be the project lead of our non-point source uh, work group, and that was Moody County Conservation District. Uh, we developed a project implementation plan with this stakeholder group and with the Moody County Conservation District, and we are basically now moving forward into implementing that project implementation plan through the funding from these SRF loans and other sources of money. These, funny, these funds from the city can now be used to leverage additional funds that are out there. It also works together with, uh, more efficiently with the other funds that are available uh, to work on these water quality problems in the Big Sioux River. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Jack Majors. We're going to kind of tag team this presentation to talk to you a little bit about the project implementation plan that we're going to basically be working together on uh, if this resolution is approved and we entered into a joint powers agreement. So. Thank you, Bob, and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just a little background for what conservation districts are. Uh, we were formed 75 years ago following the Great Dust Bowl, and uh, we were established nationwide, uh, and our main goal is to promote the wise and sustainable use of our natural resources uh, for future generations. And uh, in South Dakota, we have 69 conservation districts covering virtually every square inch of the state. And we are local units of government established by state statute. And uh, so, again, uh, the purpose for the conservation districts to be involved in this process is, again, looking at the uh, sustainable use of our natural, water, natural resources of soil, water, air, <coughs> plants, and animals. And uh, in order to do that, we are uh, taking on the lead responsibility for uh, implementing the Central Big Sioux Water Quality Project. And uh, initially, this project was uh, this portion of the watershed was in two different uh, uh, individual projects, a lower uh, Big Sioux and a central Big Sioux. And just this summer now, it was uh, recommended by DNR that we combine the two projects, and which we have done, and have gotten uh, uh, the project implementation plan updated to address uh, the combination of, those two of the two projects into one. And the Moody County Conservation District has uh, taken on the lead responsibility for that in conjunction with the Brookings, the Lake, Minnehaha, Lincoln, and Union Conservation Districts, as well as the City of Sioux Falls and the East Dakota Water Development District. Uh, these uh, combination of, this, uh, of the two units of the two projects will provide a more coordinated approach to address the TMDLs in this section of the Big Sioux River. Project sponsors for this uh, project is, are the landowners, of course, uh, the landowners living in the watershed. And uh, they are willing, uh, we're asking them to participate in this uh, at a, on a cost share rate uh, to implement various conservation practices to address the TMDLs in the watershed. And so uh, they will have a significant investment in this as they in, uh, invest in uh, the different projects that uh, are implemented on their, piece, on their properties. Conservation districts uh, will have a uh, limited financial investment, but we will provide a significant amount of um, staff uh, support 
to the project in order to make contact with the landowners and to help the landowners implement those conservation practices. As you can see, the city of Sioux Falls has a significant stake in the process. And again, as a true partner in the watershed, uh, where you use, uh, rely on the watershed for a majority of your municipal water, but then you are also a, a significant um, participant in the watershed as an occupant. And uh, the uh, effects of uh, the city on the water quality uh, definitely has uh, an effect also. So uh, we're very glad and pleased to see the city involved in this process and we look forward to working very closely with the city in, in developing and implementing the project. East Dakota Water Development District, as I mentioned, um, is actively involved uh, doing a lot of the water quality sampling in the river and also doing a landowner survey uh, part of the project implementation plan. Uh, South Dakota DENR uh, is managing the 319, the section 319 dollars that we are receiving to uh, address the uh, TMDLs in the river. And uh, so they are uh, offering uh, 609 thousand dollars from 319 uh, EPA 319 dollars to implement this USDA NRCS is also uh, very actively involved in helping cost share many of the uh, implementation practices on the uh, landstead out there and the clean water state revolving fund uh, again that the city manages will uh, provide an 86,000 for a total of five million uh, five point one million dollars Steering committee, as I mentioned earlier, are the six conservation districts in this portion of the watershed, uh, the city of Sioux Falls and East Dakota. And the partners cooperating uh, will meet at least four times a year so that we can uh, review the progress of the uh, implementation plan, what's being done and, and how it's uh, progressing, and then also to discuss, recommend, and approve ways to accomplish goals of the plan. Additional partners in the watershed course are the uh, other city governments that uh, reside in the watershed the county commissioners uh, the state uh, government with the GF and P and DNR the federal government with the USDA NRCS and the US Fish and Wildlife Service and of course the commodity groups uh, where the farmers participate in and the conservation groups where many of our wildlife and uh, recreational groups uh, participate in This uh, steering, uh, the uh, stakeholder group will be used to uh, bounce the uh, project uh, implementation goals off from as far as uh, their applicability and uh, then also to engage the uh, uh, stakeholder group in helping to uh, implement the best management practices in many cases, but then also to promote the uh, establishment of these practices and, and work with their constituents, uh, whether they be the commodity groups or whether they be the local municipalities to educate their constituents on the value of the project. The project goals, uh, basically here a brief overview of the project objectives and the best management practices were selected to address the two main TMDLs as Bob mentioned earlier, bacteria and total suspended solids. The development of a master plan is needed to establish a long-term effort that, can, that is needed to help clean up this portion of the river. These will be explained in more detail in future slides. To address the bacteria TMDL, we're working with livestock feeding operators that have been classified as priority concerns based on their proximity to the river and its tributaries in the watershed. A major focus is being placed in the Skunk Creek drainage area during this phase of the multi-year watershed project. And the purpose of that is that a majority of the city wells, our city has a number of their uh, municipal water wells in that section of the watershed. Another BMP, BMP, best management practice to address livestock fecal bacteria is to limit the access of the livestock to the river and its tributaries. Significant reductions of fecal bacteria can be achieved by keeping the livestock out of the streams in late June, July, and August, when the flows are typically the lowest and the temperatures are typically the highest, so the cattle are in wallowing in the water to cool off. Alternate watering sources uh, will be offered to the livestock producers. Uh, one access of this would be the rural water 
uh, system. And uh, the producers can use these uh, alternate watering sources then to move the cattle away from the stream and still be able to use a portion of their pastures and so forth uh, during those uh, months of June, July, and August. Another practice that is being offered to landowners are long-term 30-year or permanent easements. This option provides a vegetated buffer along the Big Sioux River and is being implemented using the SRF non-point source funds. A multi-phase riprap project has been implemented, as Bob mentioned, during the, last, the past two years to stabilize the stream bank along the Big Sioux River between Baltic and Sioux Falls. Corps of Engineers restrictions on stabilization heights have led to more conservative techniques such as log jams, which are currently being developed by the Agricultural Resource Service. And I'll go into a little more detail on that on a future slide. To reduce upland soil erosion and address the total suspended solids TMDL, we're working with landowners and operators to implement these BMPs, the terraces, grass to waterways, filter strips, in their farming operations. Terrace restoration and grass to waterways have been an important part in addressing this TMDL in the southern portion of the central Big Sioux watershed. Due to the increased use of tile drainage in this portion of the watershed over the past five years, we are encouraging the landowners to consider installing tile outlet treatment systems to minimize the potential of nutrients getting to the water courses that drain to the river. We will cost share two tile outlet treatment systems to promote this BMP and will monitor them to document their benefits. And basically what those uh, outlet systems, uh, treatment systems will be is uh, uh, some are designed as a pit in the ground and then they uh, fill that pit with either wood chips or they can use even corn fodder. And then what uh, the tile outlets will drain into that or that area and uh, those wood chips or the, uh, res the uh, corn residue will absorb the nutrients into those uh, into it and take it out of the water. So then after five, six, whatever, uh, how many years, they can remove that uh, residue out of that pit put it back out onto the cropland and refill it with new fresh uh, residues to absorb those nutrients. In order to keep the public informed and involved in helping reduce the pollutants in the Big Sioux River, we will conduct these outlet outreach efforts. This is a very important element of the plan in order to encourage more participation and increase the public, general public's knowledge and support for the project. As mentioned earlier, the master plan will provide a long-term directive for addressing the water quality concerns in this portion of the watershed. One tool that will be used to accomplish this is to establish a water quality trading plan and subsequent pilot trading project to assist landowners in implementing needed BMPs. Completion of the stream bank stability study will provide needed information in developing this master plan. The bank stability testing has been completed on Skunk Creek as part of the concepts model that is being developed by the Agricultural Resource Service, Research Service. This model will be used to differentiate the amount of total suspended solids derived from in-stream processes versus cropland and overland erosion. In order to know if what we are doing is working, we need to continue monitoring the water. East Dakota Water Development District will continue to monitor the water quality at their selected monitoring sites. To show the progress of completing the implementation plan, the project staff will provide DNR with annual progress reports and a final report for all segments of the project. To accomplish the goals of this plan, the, Minnehaha, the Moody <coughs> County Conservation District has been ad advised to establish a joint powers agreement with each of the project sponsors. Bob will present that information in the, uh, next. Thank you very much for your time and attention in this matter and look forward to working more greater with the City of Sioux Falls on this. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. And as you can tell, I think we did a, 
a good choice to go out and work with our non-point source partners. And I truly believe the conservation districts are the right way of dealing with this. They work with the ag community, the producers for decades. And to be honest with you, I think it would be wrong for the city of Sioux Falls to try and have that direct relationship uh, because of the relationship from an urban center to an ag community. So one thing I truly hope that we do achieve out of this that is a, a, a you know, nothing true of value, but to show the ag community that we are here to work with them together to solve these problems. It is all of our problem, and we need to all work together to solve the problem on the Big Sioux River. So at this time, the city, uh, city and Moody County Conservation Conservation District would like to enter into a joint powers agreement together to implement this project implementation plan that Jack has gone over. The final agreement has been approved and signed by the Moody County Conservation District. Uh, a resolution uh, to execute, execute the joint powers agreement uh, will be submitted to the council on September 4th and we appreciate your consideration and support of this resolution uh, to allow the city to enter into this joint powers agreement. Bottom line, as I stated, watershed partnerships between point sources, non-point sources, regulatory agencies, and citizens is the best way to improve the water quality of the Big Sioux River. It hasn't happened yet to a satisfactory level, and we think this is the right way of doing it. Any questions Great. of our team? Thank you, Bob. Questions for Bob or for Jack? Councilor Karski. And a few, if you don't mind. Okay. Address your last comment, if you don't mind, Bob. You said you you figure that the water conservation district is our best option for going forward or best um, entity or group to work with who else did we look at what else did we consider who else is available pretty much all the stakeholders that were listed on the previous side we invited them to these informal workshop uh, workshop group meetings and we basically offered to any of those entities to take the lead and this conservation district did take the lead and and you know there's there's discussions uh, whether there maybe some other entity should have stepped forward uh, but they were the ones that were interested in, and they do have that direct relationship with the ag community and we thank them for doing that so okay and ahead, if i could um back up here closer to the beginning when we talk about the uh, money the um on the Probably your fourth or fifth slide, sixth slide, page three, I guess. Um, you talk about the money that's available. That money hasn't been obligated in any way. It's available for us. Is that right? Do we have it already? Uh, correct. The two point three six million. That those funds are basically have been agreed to the South Dakota DNR that they will be allocated to the city for non-point source projects that are approved by the state of South Dakota. Uh, and I think it's important to kind of understand that it's a great question. Uh, they have been approved for the city to use for state approved non-point source projects. This project implementation plan has been approved by the United States Environmental Protection Agency and the South Dakota Department of Environmental and Natural Resources. So in essence, those funds are available for these projects. Have they been obligated? Technically, no, not until the council basically allows the city to enter into that joint powers agreement with Moody County Conservation District. Now that 2.36 million that you're talking about, that's our share of the total project costs. What I was talking about was um, before that, the, um, the SRF loan program, that, those funds. Yeah, those, those loans have already been uh, approved and are borrowed. Those okay. are projects like for the, uh, the East Side Sanitary Sewer, the Central Main, uh, the Wastewater Central Maine, uh, those projects have already been in place. They've been built out. Those loans are already in debt to the city. This is that 1% portion reduction of interest that's available for us. So, okay. yes, those loans two, have already been issued. And if I could, just last question, then the 2.36 million, that's not coming out of your operating budget or? No, okay. this is from clarify. that 1% reduction in their interest rates. That's truly a pass through. 96% uh, of the funds that the city is basically uh, is that will obligate to this project are through those SRF NPS funds. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, let me first of all say I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit late here this afternoon. Um, so I didn't get to hear the first part of your presentation, but, but I still have a number of questions, and that's in regard to why are we involved in this? We're talking about issues upstream from Sioux Falls. Um, 
Now, when it gets to Sioux Falls, that's a different issue, and when it gets past Sioux Falls, a different issue. But dealing with Moody County, why are we involved? Uh, because I notice Minnehaha County is not a project sponsor, but we are a project sponsor. Yeah, yeah, Moody County is a is a project sponsor. I mean, Minnehaha is not yeah. a project okay. sponsor. Yeah. In, in essence, the Moody County Conservation District is the lead agency, but oh. Minnehaha Conservation District also is a sponsor under this uh, pro project. Are they putting any money up? Yes. Yes. Um, how much are they putting up? Uh, Jack, do you know? Again, Kermit, um, yes. we, uh, as conservation districts, are putting more effort into the staffing. Uh, we are providing more staff support. Our limit, we have a very limited budget, as mm -hmm. you're not already aware of. And uh, totally, the conservation districts will uh, be putting together, what was it, 30? 32,000. Get to the right plan. <coughs> Okay. 32,000 32, and mm -hmm. uh, that's administrative support and helping to uh, coordinate the project but it doesn't cover all the technical assistance that will be provided uh, that the districts will um, you know, in-kind service you might say mm -hmm. and then they will take the leadership in each of their individual districts to implement to help the landowners implement these projects that are needed out in the watershed um, uh, Councilor Sagers, to answer your question, why are we involved in this yes. with these other counties, uh, conservation districts? The whole point is here, we've had 40 years since the Clean Water Act has been developed, uh, adopted, and there's been many attempts to solve water quality issues on a very narrow focus, this specific area of the watershed. Uh, only at this discharge pipe, and it is proven unsuccessful. The Big Sioux River is still impaired. We still have problems with it. It is our, a major portion of our domestic water supply, so the improvements that we can make upstream of, the big, uh, uh, of Sioux Falls on the Big Sioux River improves the water quality for our domestic water supply that our water treatment plant uses. It also improves the water quality entering the city of Sioux Falls for our citizens to recreate in that river. As an example, uh, we, ju we are just completing that total maximum daily load study. Uh, it has shown that we are a significant portion of bacteria in the Big Sioux River, but so are the watersheds up, upstream from us. Yeah. And for instance, Skunk Creek, the Skunk Creek watershed uh, contributes about 50% of the bacteria load on Reach 10 of the Big Sioux River, which is from the I-90 bridge to where the diversion channel re uh, meets towards Morrell's. So 50% of that bacteria load is coming from watersheds upstream from us. And so if we can assist in these conservation districts, uh, areas upstream for reducing their pollutant loads, that's going to assist us also. I mean, uh, yes. Address, um, if you look at the slide um, that I have, at least on the wall there, I don't know if it's down mm -hmm. here, but anyway, that shows in the, river, uh, the watershed the impaired bodies. And if you look at that, uh, the top upper portion, the blue portion, is not impaired um, and again uh, the quality the criteria changes to, as you get from Moody County to Minnehaha mm -hmm. County this is something that was done through the TMDL process and so there's the qual the criteria change at that point mm -hmm. but above that the river is deemed to be not impaired and so we're working with the city of Sioux Falls not only as a major participant you know, occupant within the watershed, but then also a, a very uh, heavy user of the water within the watershed because you are reciprocal of what happens above too. Yeah, no, I um, Thank you. Go continue. Ahead, uh, I agree, the river water here in Sioux Falls is terrible. It's polluted, it's, it's really terrible. And something has to be done. And I think the first thing is we have to determine who's responsible for a lot of that. And a lot of that is upstream. A lot of it is the farming that's taking place and so forth. Sir, it's not. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. No, that's right. If I'm wrong, just let no. me know. No, go ahead. Yeah. But anyway, it's upstream. A lot of this is upstream. And so who's ever doing it or whatever entities upstream is doing this, 
this is where the primary responsibility should be placed. Now, once the water gets here, and if we're polluting it, hey, it's our responsibility to take care of that issue. But who's ever responsible for doing this should be made responsible for making it, you know, cleaner. That's all I'm saying. And uh, try to place the responsibility where it lies. And, and, and Kermit, mm -hmm. uh, Councilor Staggers, I, I agree with a lot of statements yes. you made. We agree with that. The uh, thing to remember, though, is the non-point sources in the federal government's eyes are non-regulated. Uh, the federal government has not decided at this point is to regulate the agricultural community non-point sources for their discharges, except for like situations like the concentrated animal feeding operations. Mm -hmm. we, we accept uh, that the city of Sioux Falls is contributing significant loads to the Big Sioux River. Exa example that I gave you on that Reach 10, uh, close to 45% of that bacteria load is caused from our urbanized setting. So we do take that responsibility and we are trying to work together to take care of this problem. We believe this is, this is the next best solution to work as partnership with the entire watershed, work together. And one key component here that uh, may not have been expressed very clearly is that one thing that I wanted to achieve is the potential of water quality trading credits. And this project is going to give us the potential, that opportunity. We may find the city of Sioux Falls that no matter how much we invest into trying to clean up the discharges, that we might not be able to 100% bring you know, every segment into the surface water quality standards. That would give us an op opportunity for any permittee versus a non-permittee to basically mm -hmm. maybe do some water quality tradings that they'll remove wa more water they can, they can move more pounds of bacteria up here for a tenth of the cost versus us moving that same amount of pounds of be, uh, bacteria here for ten times the cost. So that's a unique portion of this project I think is going to be very valuable to us in the next several decades if it works out. Uh, but I, I, do, I personally do believe this is the right solution. That's why we're coming to the council for this. And I think it's a great opportunity. The federal government, government has recognized that they aren't regulating all non-point sources. That's why they're funneling this money from the federal government to the state of South Dakota. The state of South Dakota's uh, state revolving fund program is recognized that if we invest some of that money back into the non-point source, we can maybe help achieve these water quality standards. So I personally believe it's the right thing to do and, I, and our team truly believes this is the way to go. Thank you, Bob. We're down to about five minutes before we have to pause to be ready for our five o'clock meeting with Minnehaha County. Councilor Staggers, did you get your questions answered to the level you need them? For I did, this but meeting? I have another question. If nobody else has any other questions. That's was my question. Is Councilor Jamison, you have questions? I'll <laughs> yield. Uh, mine is more in support, so I'll yield it to Councilor Staggers. I have one question, no, if sorry. I might, Councilor Staggers, before mm -hmm. you finish. Um, my question is regarding um, the money that we would borrow, that the city, that you would like the city to borrow, the 2.3 million. Then our, what's our source for repaying those loans? Bob? Okay, again, for clarification, these are loans that the city has already borrowed from the state revolving fund. Example, if we can go back to that one slide quickly here. But there are two different slides, Bob, if I might. Correct. Just there are two different slides with, that include Correct. SRF loans yes, for us. The, the SRF loans on this slide here that I've demonstrated, for example, that $1.8 million there, mm -hmm. That is the amount that's being brought back in to us for use for non-point source. That was achieved, we've already borrowed the $18.9 million for the central main project. That's already been borrowed. We owe the state back for those loan funds, but we are gonna get this $1.18 million back and not pay interest on that back to us to use the non-point source. So loans have already been borrowed. We are obligated to those debts. We are just getting this money back instead of paying interest for those loans. Okay, that was a piece I missed. Councilor you. Staggers, do you want to finish? Yeah, it's something like that, Bob. The 2.3 million, we're getting interest free, is that right? The 2.3 million is the amount of money. It, it, for example, that first loan there, that $370,000, that loan up there, that loan from the state of South Dakota was 3.25%. Uh -huh. Because we entered in an agreement with the state, they've allowed us a 2.25% interest rate a 1% less interest rate, and then the, uh, that interest that is offset, that is where the money's coming back to the non-point source funding. So no additional cost to the city. If we did not enter this program with the state, we would have to pay these dollars back to the state because we'd have to pay at the higher interest rate. So it's, a, it's a kind of a complicated situation, but it's very unique and it's very valuable. These fundings are basically pass-through dollars from the state to the city 
to the non-point source task force to use for non-point source pollutant situations and it does not cost the city anything. It's from that reduced interest rate that we get from the state. But when you talk about a reduced interest rate, you're talking about paying less money. In this particular case, we're not paying less money. We're just paying kind of the same. Correct. We so are. We, the advantage would be for us not to do this, so then we could save money. No, they would not allow us to have the reduced interest rate. The only way we get the reduced interest rate is to use those funds that we'd normally pay into interest back into these non-point source uh, water quality improvement projects. So if we said we don't want these non-point source funds, mm -hmm. then they would have charged us at that 3.25% for that first loan. That second loan listed there, we would, instead of a 1.25% interest, we would have had a 2.25% interest. So there's no savings to the city by not doing this. There's no cost to the city by doing this. It's flow through dollars that the federal government and state have recognized. There, the funds are needed to help the non-point source community to reduce some of these pollutant loads to the streams. Okay, thank you. You bet, thank you. Thank you, Bob and Jack. Um, keep in mind, this resolution comes before us on September 4th, which is just a week from today. And so if you have further questions, more in-depth questions that you would like Bob or Jack to address during the presentation of that resolution, if you wanna shoot them an email and then we'll address them then, but there's also time for off-the-cuff off the questions then as well. Thank you for your presentation you for your and for the information. I am going to adjourn this meeting. We'll be back at 5 o'clock with Minnehaha County.